This is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we're talking about M-Style Gothic. Now on to the tutorial. Once you've installed M-Style Gothic via M-Installer, it can be located in your transitions, as well as your titles. M-Style Gothic comes with multiple add-ons, backgrounds, frames, camera movements, overlay effects, and typography. To apply, simply click and drag into your timeline. So let's go ahead and apply this background here. And you can see that that is a subtle animation in. Over in our inspector, we have just a few very simple published parameters. Why don't we use our add-ons and we can add this border here. You can see that that just comes in right there. We have some on-screen controls for position, rotation, and then we can use these to scale on our height and on our width. Over in our inspector, we can make additional changes to our published parameters. We also have these different add-ons. So we have some ornaments here, again, with some on-screen controls. And then over in our inspector, we can change what type of ornament we want. So there are eight different ornaments there. Then we have blink shapes in our add-ons as well. And these are going to work the same way. Then we can come down and we can take a look at some of our typography. So we've got some different captions here. If you just scrub over these, you can see how those are going to look over in your canvas. So why don't we use title number three? And then we can just use our on-screen control there to center that up. And again, over in our inspector, we can make changes to these different published parameters, such as your text and fonts, colors, etc. Now we do have some different overlay effects. We've got this blur and grain. We've got a crack here, film burn. Why don't we add quake to this shot? That's what we did in our intro there. Just drag that out to fill the duration of our clip. And then over in our inspector, we have animation in and out and we have additional published parameters over here to affect your saturation, your variance, your different jitters and grains, scratches etc. I'm going to turn off the animation in and out and I want to maybe make our saturate amount just bring it up just a little bit just to introduce a little bit of color into that shot and you can see here that that is just going to affect that entire clip because these are working as adjustment layers. We also used our frame. I'm going to use frame one and just drag it in and you can see as I kind of bow my head down then we have this frame coming in and we do have on-screen controls here as well. So we can just very quickly use our on-screen controls. I also used the blur and grain. So I'm actually going to drag that beneath my frame and use my on-screen control here. And I'm just going to make that nice and big so that it just kind of blurs me out. So then you can see that frame comes in. It's nice and blurred. And we used our title number one, and we are just going to bring that in on top of our frame there so that it all animates in nice and pretty together. Use our on-screen controls to just kind of make that fit. And there we go. Now we do have some different camera moves as well in here. So we've got multiple zooms. We have a quake zoom. And then we just have a standard zoom. So why don't we use our multiple zooms on this next shot? I'm just going to drag that in on top of our clip. And you can see that we have some on-screen controls for position one. And we have position two. Maybe do something like that. And position three. Maybe we can center right up on that cross there. So these on-screen controls come in really handy. You can see over in our inspector, we have number of targets. You can do three, two, or one. I'm gonna stick with three. So now let's watch how this looks.
Now we also have these overlay effects here. Why don't we grab our film burn and we can bring that in. And you can see that that is just going to do a burn over there on the side. And then we have a ton of published parameters here. So we've got our film burn opacity along with our blending size. We have our hue, so you can change the color if you'd like to something that kind of fits the scene a little bit better, something like that. And then we have our film burn wriggle and parameters, film burn flicker and grain. And let's not forget our transitions. We have a flash burn, as you can see here. If you skim over top, you can see how that's going to look. A quick shift and a scratches mask. To apply, simply click and drag in between two clips. And then you can see how that transition looks. That one is awesome. The flash burn, very cool. Over in our inspector, we have a ton of published parameters as well. We've got a flash brightness. So you can see right there toward the beginning, that is the brightest spot of our transition. So you can adjust that flash if you'd like, along with your jitter strength and all of these additional parameters beneath. Again, you can change the hue of your burn if you'd like. So something a little bit more in line with the content there. And let's see how that looks. And why not, just for fun, why don't we grab one more title here and that can just kind of come in. Again, we've got some on-screen controls and some different published parameters here. Why don't we not make it nice and big so we can see that in our scene. And there you go. That is about it from me. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial on M-Style Gothic, which is now available on MotionVFX.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, <laughs>